everybody, welcome to Fat Guy Cooking Show. Let's cook. Hey guys, we're gonna make a simple uh, Tennessee fire or fireball, either one works. Um, applesauce, got three grams of Smith apples, cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, a little, little brown sugar, and of course, Jack Daniels Tennessee fire. All right, apples are cut up, we got our cinnamon, we got our nutmeg, we got a little bit of fat going in the pan, I use butter, you can use oil, um, just a little something to decrease the pan. Uh, apples are ready. I like to start by getting the pan hot, adding the apples, throw in the, throw in the Tennessee fire, add a little cinnamon flavor, also the alcohol helps bring out the sugar in the fruit. We've already got the butter in the pan. Starting to get hot, you can hear it sizzling. I'm gonna dump the apples right in on top of the butter. Let those go for a couple of minutes before I add in the before I add, ooh, before I add in the, the, the alcohol and the spices. Try to get the whatever fat you used all over the, the apples, let them go, let, let them go. Go on a medium high heat. Gonna add in some cinnamon. Don't be afraid with the cinnamon. I don't measure anything. <laughs> so if you're looking for an exact recipe, you're on the wrong channel. A little bit of nutmeg. Turn them up again. Put them a little. Turn that around a little bit. And add just a touch of salt. Just a touch of salt. And then we're gonna hit it with the alcohol. All this kind of alcohol, just about maybe a shot for it. It'll help reduce the sugars from the alcohol. I'm actually going to add just a touch more. Bring that up to a medium high heat. Apples already have a lot of natural sweetness, so we are going to add a little bit of brown sugar to help, help bring out that sweetness. Not too much, and then be careful with the heat because the sugar does burn, but maybe a, maybe a tablespoon of brown sugar. And turn it down to simmer, cover it. That's all she wrote. Later. So Tennessee Fire applesauce. Um, Apples are nice and soft, but they don't fall. It's, it's not like an applesauce you get in a jar, but it looks really good on the plate. It goes great with pork. Um, we're going to see a uh, rib, rib recipe next. We're going to pair this with that. Delicious. I wish you could smell it. Hey right, guys, today we're going to do St. Louis ribs. Uh, baby back St. Louis, both good. I'm uh, going to do them slow cooked in the oven. We're going to take the ribs as frozen, leave them frozen. We're going to wrap them in foil. We're going to let them go in the oven for an hour, three hours. Really doesn't matter. Depends on how much you want those bones to fall out. <clears throat> We're going to put them in the oven with the dry rub only. You leave them frozen because the moisture contained in the meat frozen <clears throat> will help steam that, steam those ribs and soften them up. We've got nutmeg, cinnamon, garlic powder, cumin, Black pepper, sea salt, little red pepper. Um, do whatever kind of rub you like. This is what I like on my ribs. All right, so we're ready to put our rub on. Now we get the foil pulled out, foil double the length of the ribs because we're going to make like a pocket. And I know this is an authentic barbecue. I ain't got time for that shit. I tried that once, and I'm going to be honest with you. Good luck to you if you can sit there for 12 hours and smoke ribs. Ain't got time and I ran out of Budweiser. 
Again, doesn't matter what your rub is. Put, it, put whatever you want on. Um, we are steaming them. And be careful with the cooling because it can be overpowering. A little bit of cinnamon. And then just a little bit of nutmeg. That's all she wrote on that. We're gonna fold it up into a pocket. Make sure your seams are up for grippage in the oven. I got the oven preheating to 300. Pinch your seams real good to help keep the steam in. Because again, we're, we're cheating. We're steaming the ribs. That will go in just like that. Hour, two hours, three hours. It really doesn't matter. Three hours later. All right, ribs have steam for about two to three hours. I'm gonna take them out. That should be two racks when we film the bottom. Pop those bad boys out. We're ready to go to the grill. New England, it's spring, it's rain, and it's about 40 degrees up. Fucking freezing. Anyway. See all the steam coming off. Yeah. We're gonna add any liquid to take the liquid from the from the frozen meat. Completely cooked, we're just gonna sauce them. Let those go for a little bit. Later. And we got it, two nice racks of ribs. Is it time to eat? All right, final side for the rib dinner. We're gonna do a super easy coleslaw that is absolutely fucking delicious. Uh, the key ingredient, Mazzetti's coleslaw dressing so I don't know what you work like 10 hour days two hour commute <laughs> I don't have time to make all these sides from scratch so pre-cut cabbage simple dressing done deal that's all there is to it and it is really good Just be careful how much dressing you put in, because once it settles, it seems like it gets more. Two bags, I usually do a half a bottle. Give it a, give it a good stir. We'll throw it in the, in the fridge. Uh, you can do this ahead of time. It lasts about four or five days in the fridge, as long as the cabbage is pretty fresh. 
That's all she wrote.